So, uh, so guys, uh, this is the last day of our uh, second season. Uh, and uh, Zebrakash, actually, uh, what happened was, if you remember, in your session, uh, during the first few minutes, we were just chatting, right? So uh, yeah. we were talking about it, and we really, really felt the, uh, we can actually do it with uh, all of the other photographers as well. And it will actually give a really uh, good perspective about things that are coming uh, to all the audience. So. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. We hope uh, other panelists also join soon. Sam, can you just remind them once? Yeah, I just texted them. Okay. All right. So uh, I did not have any main agenda uh, about this discussion, but I had a couple of questions for sure that I wanted to ask all of you guys. Uh, maybe uh, we'll start with Norbert. Norbert, uh, what do you think about uh, the industry and uh, things moving forward after this pandemic? Uh, how do you see the industry changing and how do you see, uh, you know, uh, people uh, thinking about photography as a career after this pandemic? All right, that's a big question, I think. But I think it's going to be a lot more focusing locally on what you can do because it's going to be... Hey, uh, I think uh, we are losing you. Just be a lot more local. In Norway, we got uh, when they start going up again, they're gonna have a lot of ideas, a lot of plans to set in motion. So I think it's gonna be a big, a big boom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, welcome, Thai. Uh, Norbert Jayaprakash uh, Thai is uh, our today's speaker. He is a, a brilliant mobile photographer. He is uh, actually from Vietnam, but now he lives in uh, Berlin. Uh, and uh, thank you, Thai, for joining us. So uh, just to just to bring you up to the speed. So we did not have a specific agenda for this discussion, uh, but we wanted to ask you guys a few questions. So we just started with Norbert, and uh, uh, the same thing I'm going to ask Jayaprakash also uh, because uh, uh, wildlife. Uh, in itself is uh, majorly uh, a, a thing. I mean, not for you, but for most of most of the people, is going out and taking photographs with wild or going going to the nature. So, how do you think it is going to change uh, because of this pandemic? Well, honestly, I think um, I don't see much happening at least uh, in the next twelve months. Um, uh, at least reports show uh, the tourism industry has been very, very badly uh, hit. Um, tourism basically includes uh, the artist community as well. That's how that's how I look at it. At least on the on the wildlife side, because uh, wildlife tourism is uh, is big. I mean, if you're talking about places like um, Africa, Kenya, Masai Mara, and all of these places. Um, so I think all of a sudden, I also see there's uh, all of a sudden more renewed focus on local work in the sense uh, for people like me now that I've been doing most of my work overseas and I have no choice of uh, traveling abroad, at least in the next uh, 12 months or so. So now, how do I, how do I continue to make a living uh, for myself? So all of a sudden, my focus has become more local right now. So um, just started some projects with the Ministry of Environment here in Singapore and then uh, also uh, with WWF. So these opportunities probably um, uh, six months ago, if these opportunities came my way, I would have probably said no <laughs> um, because my priority was to, you know, work in Borneo, uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. But now, now obviously, uh, uh, I think secondly, uh, it's probably not the right time to be choosy right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, tough times, but uh, it's not bad. But at the same time, I I um, I, I think um, hopefully if uh, there's a vaccine out sooner or later, um, I know people are at least people are itching to just go out there as tourists, right? Everywhere across the world right now. Uh, so I think um, we'll see a. Uh, a fairly um, upward curve, uh, maybe in the first two quarters, probably uh, around 2021. I'm not even talking about 2020. I'm talking about 2021 or you know uh, mid of 2020 onwards. So yeah, I think there's going to be um, um, uh, a tourism boom, but 
uh, at the same time, it's hard to predict because it's a little complicated right now because um, I'm not sure if the tourism industry is uh, prepared themselves for the current circumstances with the COVID and, you know, systems in place, mechanisms in place, checks and balances in place to manage this whole thing. You know, a simple example would be, uh, hypothetically, let's say you went to a resort and um, uh, one patient turns out to be a COVID. If you go by country rules, they shut down the whole resort. Now, all of a sudden, you have one COVID patient and an entire resort is shut down, right? So business is like closed. So it's, I think it's complicated. Um, um, the airline industry also has been very badly hit. So many airlines have uh, shut down. Singapore Airlines here has uh, uh, sent so many people home. Uh, a lot of people are out of jobs right now. So uh, just just hope for the best. So yeah, yeah for me, it's more focused on some local work right now. Right. And Thai, what about you? Uh, has this uh, pandemic uh, affected your work? And how do you see going forward? How would you... Uh, how would you be able to go out and take photographs and stuff? Or is it maybe it is better for you because now the, the streets are empty and you get more clearer shots and stuff? <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. I think I just want to introduce a bit. Um, yeah, I'm living in Germany at the moment and um, the situation is is still like lock, not like locked up, but it's with distance. Uh, People are getting back to the business, but yeah, for over the past four months, I would say for March, uh, the, the business like there's nothing going on. Mm. And now uh, people eventually get back into the industries. Uh, the, there's no like a real lockdown anymore in Germany or in Europe. So people now can travel with the euro. Yeah. Um, me personally, I prefer to travel between the country. My my work before I was, um, I doing more mostly in urban and and travel. Yeah. Um. So I also had to travel a lot around Europe and some other continents, yeah. and because of the pandemic, I I didn't get any job that like required traveling. Uh, most of the job gonna be uh an online course or an online gallery or they just want to buy a, a photo of a commercial project or something like that. Um, at the beginning of the lockdown, yeah, the, the streets are empty as you mentioned, but um, I also like try to stay at home as much as possible. It's just also like uh, to keep safe, or not only for me, but for maybe for the other people. Um, now there's some places like like very touristic that getting back with the the people that around Europe but not, not from outside the continent. So those places are very really nice to photograph because you don't see that many people as before. Yeah. And that's also a good chance. So um, I'm getting more and more requests eventually. Uh, so I have been traveling for some country in the past two months, not that often as before, but uh, it slowly is getting back a bit. Yeah, it is. So I think uh, Norbert, uh, among all of us, has been affected the most because he was a big travel and landscape photographer. And uh, he has yeah. been, we, we talked to him uh, a bunch of times before, and he has mentioned that he is actually stuck at home right now. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much how, how it is. <laughs> I just want to say that, like, um, I saw that a lot of natural photographers they they take the chance to explore their home or like just like the surrounding of the city, yeah. like to go to some area that is like very nice in the country that they didn't expect before. And I think it's been a good. Yeah, I think you are. Yeah, exactly. So. It's so just like you guys, uh, like I know a lot of people who's just been stuck at home and like people who's never shot here in Sweden before who are Swedish, like myself, going out and just exploring the backyard and appreciating what you have like around your hometowns and just in the areas, which is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you guys, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys had a chance to, but Jay Prakash's session was actually pretty interesting because he was uh, focusing on how to capture wildlife or uh, creating stories in your own backyard, in your own city. And uh, that was pretty interesting. So. Uh, yeah, that is it. So I don't know if you guys know, Sayyam is a wedding photographer and he is based out of uh, Spain. 
uh, but he is stuck in India because of this uh, situation. And uh, because of that, he is uh, now stuck with WBC. I, I hope for uh, some more time <laughs> before he goes back to uh, Spain. And uh, 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 obviously, when he goes back, he goes back to work and stuff. And he's not able to contribute as much as, as he is uh, right now. But uh, uh, saying that, uh, 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 do you guys have any questions about to each other or the participants? If you want to ask something uh, to all of these guys, uh, please uh, write it in the chat section. We'll try to answer all the questions. And uh, uh, let me just check. Okay. Yeah. So uh, all of you, uh, to all of you guys, if you have, if you guys have any questions, please uh, message them in the chat section. We have these guys for about uh, 20, 25 more minutes. And uh, yeah, so uh, uh, tell us, uh, Norbert, uh, tell us uh, what is your next project? How, how are you going to uh, spend the next uh, few months uh, during this uh, pandemic? All uh, right, so currently I'm, uh, I'm moving. So this is uh, an old office that's not really an office anymore. <laughs> so I'm I think we lost you. Uh, now that your voice is not clear. Good program. Stuck at. Now that you hear this, you're uh, fairly audience. amazing for myself until things start up again. And it's also a good chance of companies, you know, just companies just sending over products and uh, and things to shoot in Iceland. So like you can have a local team there, or I can have a local team there that I can shoot with. Oh, okay, so you you're going back to Iceland, right? Back to Iceland, yeah. Uh, is my connection okay? <laughs> awesome. And uh, Jayprakash, what is uh, what is your next project going to be? Well, I'm supposed to be in um, Borneo right now, but uh, <laughs> uh, well, I can still go, but it's a very complicated process right now. Um, 14 days quarantine on both sides. Um, so basically, if I have uh, a week's worth work in uh, Borneo, that basically means you can add another 14 days and then I come back and another 14 days quarantine here. So it's a little complicated. Uh, but um, I started doing some um, local work with the local uh, N parks here, um, Singapore National Parks. Yeah. And um, just yesterday I got commissioned to do um, a small uh, project for uh, a new upcoming mobile phone. Uh, so they, they, they sent me a, a pre-production phone. So I've been spending uh, the mornings shooting some uh, shots for the uh, upcoming launch. I have an NDA sign, so unfortunately I can't tell you what phone it is. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much happening right now. Not much, but otherwise uh, I live very close um, to a mangrove forest here in Singapore. So pretty much uh, 5.36 in the morning, I'm there at the beach um, shooting otters and some birds and kingfishers and stuff like that. Just killing time, you know. Awesome. Hi, what's next for you? Um, I'm currently just having a project with Samsung. Um, so they have a new phone. So I'm shooting a lot with them. Um, it's like a campaign for the next... Uh, five, six months, we got that the period of the phone. Uh, right this week, uh, we had a project that we need to shoot with a layer team. Uh, I had a, my assignment color is like the fire red. So something taken by the phone and like with a dominance, uh, domination of the red color. Yeah. And uh, yeah, for the next coming up uh, weeks, um, I, I just need to use like I had a new uh, Samsung Note 20 mm -hmm. so I had to use that phone and to take picture and then also like take some video and create, create content for, for Samsung mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's my main focus now and, and uh, slightly I think I want to suit more with the customer like like an individual customer like um, set a lifestyle or portrait or even wedding photography so when you when you uh, get a customer, do they ask you to take photos using a phone only, or for that you actually do like uh, professional uh, professional work with a DSLR or something? So that uh, really depends on the brands. So like if I work with Samsung at the moment, that is Samsung Mobile. Yeah. So everything should be taken by the phone, and 
I mean, if I work for the other project, like lifestyle, for example, and then I using both, but most of the delivery uh, result are gonna be taken from the camera. Yeah. Uh, because I also work with Canon, so I got the equipment from them. Yeah. So uh, somebody uh, is asking about the pandemic situation. I think we've already discussed about this, Ishan. Uh, but uh, he wants to know when do you think the, the situation would become better and like before? Anybody has the answer to that? <laughs> well, wish we knew, but um, well, I, I think I think a lot will depend on um, you know um, mass production of vaccines. Um, I think that's the that's probably only going to be uh, the most complete uh, solution for this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, all of the other solutions are going to be just um, bits and pieces, checks and balances, and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it all depends on that. Um, I know uh, Trump claims um, he will have something before uh, <laughs> the upcoming <laughs> elections. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that I, I think most countries are under tremendous pressure to um, come up with a vaccine. Uh, Everyone does, and uh, whoever will come with the first one will be a very rich person. Yeah, but but I think most of them are. Um, I think a reasonable expectation would be. Um, uh, somewhere mid of uh, next year is what I yeah. think. Yeah. 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 Sayam, uh, you had some questions? Yeah. So it's based on the experience that I'm, we were talking to a lot of photographers before, and plus uh, just understanding the market, whether it's a wedding market or any other sector, which I would call right now, is, is we have short term goals and the long term goals. Short term is to know that we need to survive and have money for our family at the same time, have food the next day. So we all need to go back to work at some point. But keeping a balance between taking the risk of long term and the short term, uh, understanding how important it is for your mental health as well as for your physical health and your family. Would you prefer taking the risk of going out and working right now, understanding the population of India, let's say I, I come from India, so I'll probably speak more of India, but considering wherever you are going, you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of things would be involved. Would you take that risk or you would think, okay, right now I'll study, I'll make, make myself aware of all the knowledges, all the information about similar field, my field, and then move ahead with more experience, more knowledge and, and get back to it. So just a general, uh, like good, discussion about how, how do you guys think about the long-term and the short-term goals for your for your own work? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, that's a good question. Um, thankfully, uh, I live in Singapore and uh, the government here has done uh, an absolutely amazing job with this whole uh, pandemic. Uh, we have some cases uh, with migrant uh, workers, basically people who've come from India and Bangladesh and uh, Indonesia and Malaysia and other countries who are primarily working in the construction industry. Uh, so they all they're all um, typically living in uh, you know separate quarters. Um, so that 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 portion is isolated. I think the numbers are in the thousands, but right now it's come to uh, two-digit numbers. But otherwise, uh, Singapore is back to normal. Uh, life is back to normal here, and uh, though we have, uh, you know, rules and regulations and what we can do, and you know, rules like how many people can go to a restaurant and stuff like that. But uh, our uh, local cases, uh, literally in single digits over the last one month, so which is like just unbelievable. So, uh, but otherwise, masks are uh, compulsory, necessary, and um, at least for me, because I work more on the on the on the. Uh, nature wildlife side i'm usually uh, hanging around in uh, patches of mangroves and forests where there are not many people so uh, there's not so much of an impact personally for me but um, yeah but um, this is not this the the, the situation here is uh, far better than uh, what's what's happening right now in india and some of the other countries so it's it's not bad uh, not but would you like to add on to that 
Yeah, I can do that. Because I think like right now with the situation, we just have to learn to adapt for a while. I know in Sweden, like a lot of people have, we got a lot of hate in the beginning for like not locking down and not isolating enough and not doing really much at all for, for the situation. I came home from Canada in, in March. Yeah. Uh, that elderly, which was a really bad thing. We controlled more, but apart, life has been going on pretty much as normal here in Sweden. And at the beginning, it was a bit of a spike, but since we are not really coming, see how right now life is normal. Life is over. You're gonna have to be able to live your life pretty much as as you used to, and not be too restricted if you're gonna be staying home for a, for a long time like this. Yeah. So with that as well, like a lot of people, just like you choose a few friends you hang out with, you choose a few people you work with. You don't do like massive productions and massive shoots, but you choose a small group that you know you only need them and some few others, and that minimizes the risk of you know getting and everything in there. And that way you can learn to to work like on a bit of a smaller scale and be a bit more careful, but still go on pretty much as uh, as usual i would say because we got a lot more space in sweden than you do let's say in india we have plenty of forests and plenty of nature just to be out and away from each other so it's uh, it's not too tricky and the same thing especially being a, a nature photographer and uh, doing landscapes and all that it's easy to go away from the crowds and, and just be alone sleep in a tent and not meet too many people yeah. So pretty much is normal here, but it would be good to not have that worry of, you know, getting close to people you don't know or catching disease and giving it to someone else and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I actually wanted to know you, your guys' uh, perspective on, uh, let's let's talk about something else than coronavirus, because uh, quite frankly, I am absolutely bored with this stuff. I actually have stopped <laughs> listening to the news, following uh, trends, the all the data, the projections and the numbers. So there's an, an overwhelm, uh, overwhelming uh, um, amount of news that is getting thrown on you from every direction, from social media, from your colleagues, from WhatsApp, from everybody. So I wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, generally, where do you guys see uh, your particular profession going towards? Uh, for example, uh, for example, uh, I think Thai would be uh, most... Uh, uh, I mean, the uh, perfect person to answer this question because we think that mobile photography is the future. So uh, where do you guys think uh, the uh, photography or the uh, generally the digital uh, content creators uh, path is going towards? Hi, why don't you answer this question? Um, I mean, the, the camera on the smartphone nowadays is improved a lot and you can do almost everything with the, the, the smartphone yeah. like uh, especially I think now um, you can make a very good video content with the phone as well not only like a good photo and most of the people had the smartphone and they can make a decent photo at least with this hardware that improving a lot recent um, well it's it's gonna be a, a future, but the on the camera uh, industries like like Sony or Canon or Nikon, they also uh, try to improve a lot with the mirrorless um, products, which is like lightweight, but still, I mean, you cannot carry it in the pocket as a smartphone. So um, definitely, in the future, smartphone is going to be like very dominant uh, camera. Uh, device in your hand, I would say. Yeah. But I mean, there always something like in the mass productions that the company that required to to use the uh, very com like professional gears like a DSLR or mirrorless camera or even medium format, a different format. Um, but because of the people at the moment, they're using smartphone a lot and they you know, take picture and with all this kind of social media. And I would say like for social media um, quality, uh, smartphone is the, the best option. Yeah. Because um, you're gonna take a lot of time when you take picture with the, the real camera and then editing and importing 
and all this kind of inventory things. But with a phone, you can even edit right away in the app and then post it to share with your uh, social media and platform. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is with blooming. I mean, Instagram was like before with the blooming of the, the app, and now something like TikTok or with a video, more video content, mm -hmm. uh, people can do a lot of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Jay Prakash actually mentioned that uh, I don't know, uh, since a uh, very long time you have been taking photos using your phone itself, right? Uh, of your family and stuff. So, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I think actually, that is uh, very similar to what we also have been doing. Uh, for the past, I don't know how many years, like two, two and a half years, uh, my family has just stopped me from taking the camera on our trips. Because if I have the camera, I'll just go on like uh, taking photographs. So I usually now only carry my phone. And, and uh, the, the documentation of our travels is, um, I think it is a lot better than if I had a, a, a DSLR with me. Uh, because now I'm taking pictures of uh, the places as well as the family, as well as the, uh, the food we are eating and everything. So the, the documentation part actually is improved a lot. So, uh, Norbert, what do you think about this? Because you are a professional travel and landscape photographer. Uh, do you use phone uh, as much as you do, as, as much as you use your uh, camera? You know, I do, and it, I really hate it when you uh, when you plan a shot and you set up a tripod and you take the photo and you feel like it's really good. And then you just take a quick photo with your phone just to like to have it on your Instagram stories or show your family or friends. And that turns out better than the photo you have on your main DSLR straight away from, from, like from the shop. So that happens a lot. And I, I tend to not use them because I need the quality for, you know, uh, printed photos, especially in a lot of, uh, a lot of information in there and a lot of quality. So for that, I always use my big mirrorless camera, uh, full frame, but for just everyday photography, I mean, the best camera is the one you have with you. And usually that is your phone and they're good, getting so good now that a lot of times you can't see the difference between a phone photo and the Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I even have filters. You can make them look good. That a lot of times, you just if it's not commercial work, you, you don't need a DSLR. It's not commercial work. Yeah, absolutely. Or so, for most commercial work, at least. Still, like if you shoot for Samsung, they want you to shoot with the phone. Yeah. So, uh, Norbert, Jayprakash, Thai, uh, we have Milad also with us. Uh, Milad uh, is a big so sports photographer. And, uh, Milad, uh, here what we are trying to do is just uh, talk about things, talk about the uh, uh, photography in, during pandemic and moving forward and stuff. So general uh, uh, discussions we are just having. So let's let's take your take on the last question that we had is how do you see mobile photography uh, uh, moving forward or how do you see photography moving from the cameras to mobile photography? Uh, I can imagine that in your profession still uh, DSLRs are the prominent things, but how do you see moving forward uh, the role of mobiles in uh, every kind of photography? Hi guys, uh, thanks for having me on board. Sorry for the delay, and thank you all. Thanks for thanks for all the panelists for the great workshops I tried to attend. Yeah. Most of them, and I'm sorry that I missed a few, and I will be watching them later. Well, uh, just to go straight to the uh, answer to your question uh, about mobile photography in uh, the profession that I'm working, sports photography, it still doesn't have any place. I mean, there are very, very few scenarios where you can use your mobile phone for some panoramic shots and some wide angles and stuff. But for the serious stuff, still you would need to have... Uh, a I'd say proper camera and uh, with a big sensor with the proper lenses and stuff and uh, recently apart from DSLRs mirrorless cameras are now being very popular in uh, sports photography but still DSLRs are playing the main role in it and uh, but I think that in next few years mirrorless cameras are going to take over but about mobiles I don't see any place for mobile photography in sports yet in uh, very high levels. Okay. So uh, one question I had was... Mike is back to you. Yeah so, uh, so one question I had was uh, uh, sports photography is kind of journalistic photography only right? So. Have it, has it ever happened that someone has taken a really good photograph or 
of a moment uh, using their mobile and I shared on your social media and uh, even before you had a chance to click it and send it to uh, uh, somebody to get published on some website or some, some magazine or something. Yeah, you can you can take some good photos of uh, sports action with your mobile. It is possible, but uh, we cannot. It, it's not trustable. If you cannot rely on it as a tool that you can take photos of. I mean, there might be very few occasions where your mobile can be useful, but it cannot be trusted as a tool for professional usages in big events. I guess. Uh, so I think I missed a part of your question. If I did. Please rephrase it because I your voice was a little cut. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask was uh, has somebody posted some photograph using uh, using their mobile or their camera uh, before you had the chance to send it to your okay. publisher or your editor to get it published? Some some important moment in some sports. Ah, okay, okay. I I get it. It, it really depends on you know, whom you are working for. Uh, if speed. Speed is important in sports photography. There's no deny, but it really depends. Sometimes you're not in rush to send your photos. You're taking a uh, you're taking photos of an event for an for a photo essay or for your book or something. So you don't need to publish it. Yeah. It's not just a matter of time always. But if you're working for somebody like Getty Images, they have wires connected their cameras and just when they're taking the photos a group of photo editors are sitting back there and they will be receiving the photo in like maximum 10 seconds after the photo is taken and it takes for them to uh, edit the photos and that will take like more not, that will not take more than 10 seconds because they all have presets and stuff and then uh, uh, approximately from the mo moment that the action has happened and uh, photo is taken, it will take less than 30 seconds for that photo to go online uh, for Getty Images and uh, big news agencies like that. So I don't think that mobile photos can compete with them in that level yet uh, because there's a group of uh, professionals working on that to make sure that the speed is like the maximum possible. But it, I, I, as I said again, it really depends on the needs of uh, the people who you, who you are shooting for. For example, my time limitation is not like get the image where we're working, but it really depends. But still, if you want to speed up the workflow, there's no chance for even mobile phones to compete with you. Awesome. So uh, somebody has asked, what are your favorite lenses and why? Maybe we can start with... Uh, 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 it's a good question, but I have to say that uh, my favorite lens, it really depends on the subject that I'm shooting and on the environment. For example, if it's a very beautiful arena with a beautiful lighting and full of spectators and stuff, uh, I would prefer to use a wide angle lens to shoot the whole venue and a 24 to 70 to shoot the action and the atmosphere. But if that's not the case, uh, I am a fan of 300 prime lens and uh, 51.2. These are two of my favorite lenses. And if I want to get super close to the action, I would always take my 400 2.8 with me. Prime lenses are somehow my favorite lenses amongst them. Okay. Awesome. So when possible, I'll, I'll try to use a prime lens. Okay. All right. So uh, guys, so we are almost out of time now. So I just wanted to go one by one to each one of you and ask you uh, like one thing or two things that you can recommend all our viewers or everybody who will be watching this on social media later, we'll be posting this. So, so how they can uh, cope up with this time and how they can uh, move ahead and grow as a photographer. Uh, why don't we start with Jay Prakash? Wow, you kind of put us on the spot. I wasn't expecting this question. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, I think... Um, uh, especially all those who cannot travel right now uh, can start focusing on doing some dom more domestic work. I think uh, uh, traditionally we've ignored a lot of domestic work and we've always focused on uh, working overseas. Uh, but I think uh, there's tremendous potential to do a lot of work uh, in-house um, around your neighborhood and network. So probably uh, that would keep you uh, focused and uh, uh, especially with what I do, since there are a lot of hobbies, stuff, hobbies, hobbies out there, um, 
just there's so much of wealth in your backyard which you've always ignored uh, it's as simple as uh, a garden lizard that we've never bothered to see in our backyard you know <laughs> to photograph so go out there um, have fun uh, most importantly uh, be safe and uh, just hang in there i think um, there's light at the end of the tunnel and um, uh, this should all should all, we should be able to get over this um, hopefully soon good luck and best wishes to everybody out there thank you jeff guys hi why don't you go um i guess i learn the 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 content of your uh, creative is the, the most important thing so uh, try to create the different things and, and try to spend this time um, yeah like to explore your neighborhood and and try to find the different way of uh, photography like to to try to be more creative uh, i mean it is always has the advantage and disadvantage of the situation so uh, you can also have some time to learn Uh, online course like how to edit photo and and how to try to improve your workflow or try to the uh, different type of photography that you never done before i think that's uh, important okay thanks sir hey norbert why don't you go in all right so that's some that's some really good advice so far as well i just want to add to that now that it is a bit slower times and less things are happening to take really time and focus on yourself and and learn something or or get better at what you're doing So watch a lot of like youtube tutorials or buy out an online workshop or do something like like this that we're doing now and and go through with it and actually learn how to maybe edit in lightroom or edit in photoshop or how your camera actually works and uh, and really get good at that part so like take something and just sit at home and get really good at it and that's the good of doing it is just steal like an artist which is uh, actually a, a book I read so I stole the title from that one as well <laughs> but to try and like find people who inspire you uh, on Instagram Pinterest online whatever that way and just try and recreate their work try to make make your work look like them because it probably won't it will come out like something different that will look more like you anyway but that way you learn the process of like trying to imitate how they do it and it makes you a lot better as well so a lot of youtube a lot of editing a lot of sitting in front of the computer and then go out and shoot and actually try and make this happen and become even better at what you're doing so when you get out of there you you have a fresh set of skills that you can use for for photography and that way also just like working on your website working on your your pitch what you can offer maybe start a print shop so you can sell prints as well at home if you're not making it enough if you like at the moment and just really take time right now and to be slower and just work on yourself a lot all right and i'll leave you with that thank you very much great answer yeah milad please uh, go Well uh, my face my first advice to you guys is to keep safe because this is now the most important thing we should all focus on and uh, apart from that like my friend Norbert I would suggest you to keep on learning because uh, most of the time when we are busy at events when while when we're shooting uh, we don't have that much time to spend reading and learning and stuff so now is the best time to go through all the tutorials that you have read books as much as possible try to read guys study and study because uh, the more we study the more we understand that we need to know more and uh, i would suggest you to go through the archive of your photos go through the photos that you've taken before and see and uh, analyze your photos and see what could have been done in a better way so that you learn from them for your future uh, photo shoots that are coming up and uh, spend some time to to go through your website your instagram page and sort your archives and uh, that's the best we can do so far because keeping safe is the most important thing that we can do and when possible and when it's safe try to do a little bit of shooting so that the battery on your cameras do not die <laughs> yeah that's absolutely. my advice to you that's that's a good one <laughs> awesome, awesome, right? yeah. uh, no, uh, somebody asked a question i think shobhit uh, they have already answered uh, most of your questions in their session for right now uh, and uh, we are running out of time shobhit so really sorry uh, sayam wanted to say something sayam why don't you go ahead yeah just want to appreciate and really thank you all for coming from a different background different mindset different countries all together and it means a world to wpc and anurag and me to make an impact on larger scale and how we need to promote it's very very important and all the ideas all the impacts all the knowledge 
you guys shared with us means that we understand that the knowledge and education is the power is the key. So now if we have the time, we should focus on that. Like Milad, you mentioned Jeb Prakash in your session now, but like how you uh, went through the, the mountain searches and all with the application, it was, it was fun. Like it, it, it brings the different dimension to, to the world of photography because we grew up as a photographer, not in a fancy way, like still in my society, the, the job photography still holds the very low value as a person if you're a photographer. But knowing the fact that how this society is growing and understanding from your agenda and your aspect, it, it means a motivation to a lot of photographers out there. So I would like to thank you for that. And just to add on, uh, whosoever is watching this video, the main impact is to be close to your loved ones because those are the important people who really keeps you growing, keeps you alive. Like Anurag and me are very close, like brothers and all. He keeps me pushing me, motivating me. And at the same time, do something which is very close to your heart and you do it and give your heart. And, and trust me, things would be fine back to normal. And then you'll realize you, you enjoyed that phase and you learn and you moved ahead in life. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Sam, for that. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thanks, so now, hi, if you want to take like uh, two or three minutes, go have some water. If not, if you want to start your session right away, you can do that. Uh, thank you guys. If you guys want, you can stay back. Uh, uh, Thai is going to talk about mobile photography. And uh, uh, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to start. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much for uh, giving your time, your experience and your knowledge for this session. And uh, we'll be doing a lot more stuff very soon. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll connect back to you guys uh, after this session. Uh, we have a lot more things coming up. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Bye for you guys. Now. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Sure. Thank right. you guys. Keep safe. Peace. You too. Hi, right, so do you want to start?